Music Song. Hello, everyone. Welcome to eLearn Chat, where you always learn something new. I'm Rick Zanotti, and I am joined today by Harold. The Harold, who's usually behind the scenes, is today in front. He is our video producer, but he's also co-hosting today. Leslie Price has a day off, and we will see her next week when we come back again. Um, today, we've got a great special guest. He's been on before, and always love having him on. It's Peter Baker, voiceover talent extraordinaire, coming to us from the UK. Here we go. This show is sponsored by Relay Corporation. Digital learning development, media development, corporate video, management consulting, and more. Visit us at www.relate.com. Thanks. And we are back and in that center position of power. It is Peter Baker. How are you doing, Peter? Yeah, look, you're both sides of me there. Fantastic. Yes, I'm fine. Thank you very much. Here I am in uh, gloomy Manchester in uh, the north of England in the UK. And uh, hello. I hope I can uh, be of interest to your viewers tonight. Ah, you're always of interest. And and for those who don't know Peter, Peter is has been doing voiceover and all sorts of work with his voice and other things uh, for a very long time. He, he was with you originally with the BBC, weren't you? Yes, indeed. That was back in the 80s. I was an InVision newsreader where I had to wear a suit and tie mm. and do all the, the bulletins for the BBC and uh, in, on television. And then I also did a radio show at the weekend. And then I ca that was in Bristol. I came back up to Manchester then and uh, worked for Granada Television as a reporter. But I've always been doing voiceover stuff right from the 70s mm. when I worked for a radio station in Manchester called Piccadilly Radio. And, uh, and yeah, you know, as my voice has changed and got older over the years, uh, you know, the, uh, from doing student voices, I'm now doing Father Christmas voices. <laughs> so it's, you know, it's interesting how... <laughs> Uh, as your voice moves, you, your work changes as well. So, you know, you know what though? I think your voice hasn't changed; it's aged beautifully. That's very kind of you. Yes. I, I like your I like <laughs> oh. your voice. I think you have a real. When I first heard you, I think I was watching YouTube, and and an ad showed up from you, and I went, Peter Baker. I need to get a hold of him. Uh, I just thought you had a great voice, and and not only that. For for those who who don't know, Peter has is also a very good trainer. He has a great training program uh, on Udemy for learning how to use your voice, the master class for for voiceover, and it is it is extremely inexpensive. So it, it is you know, when I first saw how much you were charging, I went. You're 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 giving it away for free almost. It, it's a really valuable <laughs> course, and and I say I that think seriously. That's the Black Friday uh, price actually, so you better get it quick before. That's it goes right, back. and they are doing <laughs> Black Friday. Yeah, actually, you know what? On one of our Udemy courses, we have a course on on um, audio, uh, audio basics for e-learning, which can be used for anything. Uh, but at the end, we are referring people to your course for voiceover. So that's well, been there for about, I don't know how long we've had that course up, about six, seven months. And so if you ever get any referrals from us, hey, a pleasure. But well, um, uh, thank and, you very much. Jen. Uh, the one you've just shown is actually the new one. It only came out last week. So uh, it hasn't got many people getting it, but I'm very proud of it. It's one on voice acting. Voice yeah, acting and, and is taking all the four areas of voice together. Mm hmm. And that's a real interesting part of it because a lot of people think having a good voice is all you need. And that's just the beginning. It, it, well, it it's true. And it depends yeah. what you want to get into, to be honest, because you've got your average voiceover <clears throat> announcer kind of stuff, which could be anything from e-learning scripts to you know phone prompts and mm -hmm. uh, reversing lorries, elevators. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, the, the voices for all sorts of different things. Uh, and then there are audio books as well, which you can have great fun um, with the fiction side. But of course, you've got to know how to do character voices for audio books. And so I thought, well, I haven't done anything on that. So that's why uh, I did voice acting. And of course, you can then move on to um, uh, animations and doing silly mm -hmm. cartoon voices. And then you can do uh, serious acting as well for the high end video games, which, of yep. course, are really you know, bigger than the movie industry now. It, it, that's true. That's true. And also, there's also the movie. Have you done movie trailers? 
uh, in this country I have. I, I, yeah, they, could they get me to do the UK versions of, mm -hmm. of them? And <laughs> usually it's uh, the the stereotype movie trailer deep voice thing. Right, in, in a this, world. Uh, yeah. In a world. Yeah. Those you have to get close good. to the microphone. Yeah, which is fun. It's it's just a lot of fun. Now, I was going to ask you last time. I don't think we got around to it. I, I We were listening to some of the stuff you've done, and I think we were looking at I was trying to figure out what mic you had. And at first I said, it sounds like a Neumann. I'm listening to it because that's a very Neumann sound. And I think, was it a TLM 103? Or, which one are you using? It is. It is a 103. I did. I did have a U87, um, mm. but it got broke, and I sent ah. it away to be fixed, and they still haven't fixed it yet. So this is a TLM-103, a transformerless microphone. Yes. And, and to be honest, no one has noticed the difference between a $2,000 microphone and I a know. $600 microphone. It, you're right. So I'm well, very of course, that, that 103 it. is what, it, it's, uh, it's uh, I think, about 1200 now. Oh really? Oh yeah, it's about the 103. Yeah, you're, you're, you've got a lot more money there than you think. The 102 is about 699 now, I think, or 799. Um, I have yeah. the TLM 102, which I like, but it's not my favorite because that particular mic. It's really small. I remember when I, it's about half the size of the 103, and I, I took it out the box and I went, ah, 800 bucks. This is about a decade ago. I brought it. I bought it and took it out and went, that's it. <laughs> this little thing is 800 <laughs> exactly. bucks. And then, of course, when you put it on, it really has a good sound, but it's also very, very sensitive to everything. And yeah. as a result, and, and I don't mind the bassy part of it. It's extremely bassy, too. So you've got to kind of play with the equalization on the, on the compressor to get it just right. But yeah. but you sound really good on the 103. I, I like that sound on you. And it's, it's, you know, it's that noise. I could tell right away. I think it's a Neumann. I'm, I, I yes. almost spent money on it. <laughs> well, you, see, you, you don't. The voiceover never chooses the microphone. The microphone chooses you, uh, like Harry say. Potter, really, isn't it? Yep. Using the wands. Uh, mm -hmm. But I, I know, it, it just seems to like my voice, and it seems to make it sound good, you know, without any compression. But interestingly, Neumann didn't make these for voiceovers. They made them originally for recording orchestras, in, in particular cellos. Um, Interesting. Because so it, it, you know. We've just found out that the proximity effect gives mm -hmm. you the extra bass. But, um, uh, you know, they're meant for like 12 feet away from a cello. Oh, well. That's interesting. interesting. I did not know that. And, and the cello is Yeah, such there's a... a book about Neumann microphones. <clears throat> Maybe someone will buy it for you for Christmas. And what a lot of people don't know is that Neumann, the high-end Neumann, is owned by Sennheiser. It is Wait, now. Yeah. It, it's yeah. been for, no, actually, it's been like a long time, actually. I just never knew well, that. They it kept it very family quiet. Of a company, wasn't it, in the 50s and 60s? Yes. Yeah, I think it was 70s, mid 70s. Yep. By Sennheiser. yep. And yep. they keep it very separate. I, I actually didn't find out till about five, six years ago when my, this is, I've got the 416 on, the Sennheiser MKH 416 in front of me right now. And it went, one of them went bad. I had two. One of them, the, the, the transformer part in the back went bad. It just started making noise and, so I sent it in, and when I went online to, to register for the repair, it said, if you have a Neumann, go here. If you have, I go, Neumann, wait a minute, they're the same. So the same repair, <laughs> and so it, and they, they fixed it. This was sent to Connecticut over here, uh, oh. and then they, I think it was near Stanford, Connecticut, and they fixed it within two weeks. I had it back, and it was just perfect. Um, and they didn't even, did they charge? I think they charged, no, they didn't even charge me for it. Because I guess wow. I was under warranty still, and they were great, very good service, and uh, and I guess Neumann's the same way, except they've they've got your U eighty seven. They're gonna have to send that back to you. That's an expensive mic. Yes, yes, exactly. Yes, now, they 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 were. Now but the U eighty seven is I also. It, so when I get it back, I may sell it. I'm quite happy with this. To be yeah, honest. yeah. Now the U eighty seven is also sensitive. Did you did you find that you you had to have a fairly pristine studio with it or? Or did yes, you work well, I could only use that in my voice booth. I, this is an mm. area which I usually use for demos and doing yes. my accounts and stuff. My actual voice booth is there. I, my camera can't show it, but there's mm -hmm. a door. I go in, I close the door, and I can't hear a thing. A thing. It's wonderful. Yeah. yeah that's is your nice. actual voice studio the one that we've got that you sent over some photographs of yourself in? Is that inside yes. here? Yeah. That's it. That's just over there. Yeah. <laughs> That's my wonderful booth, uh, which I've had for some years now, but it's brilliant. You know, the guy can have the leaf blower on all day and doesn't mm -hmm. affect me. 
That's nice. Yeah, that's nice. We're <laughs> right where we are. We've got a lot of um, uh, fiberglass on the walls. Uh, we we bought. I forgot the brand. Um, uh, but they're made out of fiberglass. They do a really good job. And in here we have a you know, probably a thirty foot or forty foot by about twenty foot studio and. It's fairly quiet. We could actually record voiceover in here without getting too much noise. And we've got lots yeah. of gear running right now. It's pretty quiet, but we were right under a flight path. <laughs> so we've, oh. got, we've got military aircraft and some commercial flying overhead all day long. And I don't think yet it's gotten into any of the shows. Oh well, that's so, lucky, yeah, isn't it? So we've been we've been fortunate, yeah, because this building has very yeah. thin walls, and yet it's not been bad. It's not been bad at all. So so tell us, you do the, the your new training is on the characters. How to use characters in your training? In, in mm. fact, we were talking Harold and I that we should do the whole show just doing f- voices. You know, crazy YouTube, voices, and it could be really interesting <laughs> and really fun. <clears throat> Um, well, but, I, for the course, I invented this thing called the, the, the character uh, control panel, basically, because we've all got different characteristics. And if you change one, you can change another. And then you get mm-hmm. like a preset for each character, mm. write it down and you can use that for something else. So and everyone will have different parameters like uh, in the course that I, I mentioned, the one I, I've used myself. So you've got personality, you can tweak that, you can change the accent, you can change mm-hmm. the, the shape of the mouth, you know, change the nasality, physicality, because like if you're cranked up like that, it's different from when you're doing this, you know. Mm-hmm. You can clip the voice. It, there's so many different things you can do to create different character voices. And uh, p- particularly for audiobooks, where I know people know it's really you there all the time. Yep. But when you are talking the character voice, you've got to give a good nod to that character, especially when you've got one person speaking next to somebody else. And of course, the listener for the audiobook can't see the speech marks so you the narrator really got to get a good job to make it clear who is speaking yeah so you have it sounds to me that you have, you have a pretty uh, well-defined system for getting back into that because that was one of the things i was going to ask you you know once you do a voice how do you make sure that you're able to get back into that same character and sound like it's not a totally different character even though it's a no, different take it. and all that well uh, an audio book I'm doing at the moment is uh, an Arizona guy called Ram Tooley, and he's written a whole series of books called The Harding Hall Mysteries. Mm. They're based in 1920s London. And I don't know if you know him, but he's an r- amazing guy. He's, he's written, uh, where's he from? From Phoenix, Arizona. Hmm. And he's never been to England <laughs> in his life, done all his research online, you know, but it's perfectly good. <laughs> So he's asked me to do the audiobook versions, and I'm on book two at the moment. Fine. And so it's, uh, I know. So the main main characters is Loris and Lars and their brothers. So they've got to sound different from each other. So Lars is a big fat guy, looks a bit like a walrus, a big beard and all this kind of stuff. And Lars is just a bit posh and stuck up. So Lars's voice is really my voice because it's the narrator as well. And you can't have a personality going all the way through as the narrator because you get tired out doing it normally. But I can do that because it's very close to my own. It's a posh version of my own. But Lars is where sort of half a yawn. You go, oh, like that. Lars comes from deep down there. And so, hello, Lars. It's Lars, your brother here. And um, so when you hear those two, they do sound different. uh, Yet they're the same person because of their brothers in a way. So that's the kind of thing you have to do. And if it's the different sex, then it's you say, obviously, you know, Catherine said, and you just do it a little bit higher, a bit breathier, a bit less resonance. And, in, you know, that's how you do the other sex from the one you are. But um, audiobook narration is good fun, and it's sort of a halfway house between just doing straight voiceover and proper acting. Now, how do you get... I have a friend who... Um, Actually, has taken your course, and he's really improved his voice. He's getting there. He wants to be a pro, but he hasn't. I I've noticed he hasn't let himself go yet. You know, he does a lot of reading of books and stuff, but I, I'm waiting for him to to just come out and just release himself from his voice. And how do you train somebody to to let go, 
to to try to get out there, be a little more extreme in the way they sound, be not afraid to uh, to experiment with their voice. What I suggest is to get a good friend that you can trust, maybe a family member or a, a partner who also wants to do the same thing. I call it like a voice buddy. Mm. So you and your voice buddy gets together. You're both at the same sort of, uh, you know, part of your career path. Both of you want to get on. Ideally, you shouldn't be rivals. So maybe a male and a female can work together. You might even be a matrimonial buddy. I don't have no idea. But basically that you criticize each other and also you don't mind making a fool of yourself in front of the other person as well right. and just have fun and the key to it is to record yourself and play it back and to criticize you know so many people just do things on their own in a car and don't record themselves or whatever and you don't know how well you're improving so you need to record so i mean back to my character book my harding hall mysteries the ram Tooley books i mean i've got like 20 different mini files that I have to relate to. So I know that's Inspector Kerr's voice. I know that's the mm. butler's voice. That's the maid's <laughs> voice. So you've got all these little samples, just 10 seconds, and they help to get the memory back in the brain. So that's what you need to do. And yeah, voice buddy definitely helps uh, anyone. And just get a, you know, a glass of wine down here at the end of an evening. Just let yourself go. Have some fun. Mm -hmm. Just relax, man. And, and nobody can see you. That's the great thing as a voice actor. Nobody can see you. So the, the poor theatrical actors not only have to learn the lines, but people are looking at you in the theater. Right. Us, yeah. we, can just, we can read the script and <laughs> nobody can see you. See, I could take my shirt off and no one will know. Yep, that's true. I, I remember uh, when I went to see Evita here, it was at the Schubert Theater in Los Angeles. And um, oh, what was her name? It just slipped. Um, she was very famous and I think she lives in Europe now. I think. Lane Page? Uh, no, the other one who did Evita. Is it um, Patty Lupon? Patty uh, Lupon. Yeah. Patty Lupon. I, I believe she lives in London now and she's doing plays over there still. Obviously, she's a lot older now than she was when you know, Evita came out, I think, in the, the probably early 80s, if not late 70s. Yeah. And it's a very trying play for the voice. She literally sings for two hours straight. And in some place, she's scream singing. She's getting very loud. And she said she could, when she did that on Broadway, I think it was two years straight, she said, I had no life. I would, I would sing for the matinee, and then I would sleep, and then come back for, and then I would rest literally 12 to 14 hours because my voice needed that much nourishment, that much relaxation in order to, to, to be able to continue that. And when I went to see her live, and she started the show, and within about 15 minutes, she just stopped. And she had to go off stage. She apologized and had to leave. Oh, no. She lost her voice. She oh, sounded no. great when she started. It just left. She goes, my voice just was gone. She, I yeah. couldn't get a note out. And she... And, Did and, the, uh, the understudy take over? And then, they were what? wonderful. The understudy was great. Um, so that was good, but everybody was so sad for her. And she came out at the end. Everybody gave her a standing ovation. <laughs> uh, she was so apologetic. She, I am so, so sorry, but thank you so much to my understudy who was wonderful too. And, um, but it was a great show and, but it's amazing. Yeah. People forget and, and you, you work on your voice day and night. Yes. A lot uh, of people ask, yes, not, I worry how do you so keep much your I'm voice? going to lose my voice? Yes, I mean, that's the, a, a good yeah. thing about the pandemic in that people are more, well, they're distant. You know, there's less people spitting in your face all the time. People are wearing masks. So there <laughs> yes. is a positive of wearing masks <laughs> yes. because you're less likely to pick up general germs and things like that. But you do have to rest. But I've just done a video for uh, YouTube on uh, voice acting exercises. Mm. And my number one exercise is actually sleeping <laughs> because that's the great reset. You know, mm -hmm. at the end of a heavy day, you get a good night's sleep and, and you sip water during the night. I don't know if you're like me, but I wake up every hour and a half, whatever. Take a sip of water, keeps mm -hmm. you lubricated. Yep. In the morning, you've reset <laughs> your voice. It's like a factory reset on yep. your voice. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Now, where we are, for example, we are near Los Angeles. We're about 50 miles northwest of Los Angeles. We're in high desert. This is the Southern California Peninsula, if you will. Is well, It's not a peninsula, but it's high desert. It's a plate. Um, we're dry, and sometimes we're, we're as dry as 2 to 4%, which is really dry. 
That's when you wake up and your wow. voice is going, <laughs> it's God. Um, how, what, do you what buy do you humidifiers for the house? Is, is that where you, know, you, you get it back again? Humidifiers? Uh, uh, we do humidifiers. We don't have one on today because it's about 70% humidity today. But some days, yes, we put the humidifiers on. That helps. It actually helps. And, of course, lots of water, uh, tea, mm. maybe maybe a, a non-caffeinated tea, uh, or sometimes caffeinated, depending on how awake you are. Um, yes. But <clears throat> there are moments, and, and I know a lot of voiceover talent, and it, it's sort of funny, but most of us tend to do this a lot in the morning. <clears throat> and, and, you hear, and, and you watch a lot of outtakes, and voiceover people are always clearing their throats. Because yeah, it's, it's not very good for you, actually. You shouldn't really no. do the coughing no. stuff. But yeah, gargling is, is all right. Mm. Uh, I, 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 and a lot of people don't think it's old fashioned, but it, I, it works for me. Yeah. I gargle. It and, coats everything. And, you know, just yeah. Sort of spit it out. But it, that, that helps to, to get my throat back again. Now, we, we found have a thing a, from England. Sorry. We have a thing from England. It's called the vocal zone. Have you heard of that? Yes. Yes, I, I've got some up those, there in my cupboard. Oh, those are, well we have them over here. Yep, we have them in the pastels are excellent. And yes. also Sanderson's throat specific, which Sanderson. is sort of this uh, yellow liquid you buy. I don't ah. know if you can buy that over there, but that's Probably excellent. Probably can. It's astringent. Mm. Okay. Oh, yeah. And it works well. This is what the vocal zones look like, if anyone's yeah, wondering. Yeah, that's it. Yep. yep. This they do a wonderful the job. This sponsored by vocal zones. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> they really do a good job. And... And every so often, I don't use them all the time, but when sometimes it's really dry, I'll put, I'll, I'll take that and it helps. It, it really helps. We also have a spray that does a pretty good, I think it's called Vocal Ease or something yeah, like that. Yeah, Vocal Ease. Vocal Ease is pretty good too. And and I think that's a little bit of liquid honey, echinacea, and one other thing. I can't yes. remember what. And it seems to, to help. It just clears out some of that dryness. Because um, yeah. even when you're in this kind of climate, when it's dry, it's so hard to hydrate, no matter how much you try sometimes, because it just gets all, it's in your throat, especially if you talk a lot. Yes. And, yes. and it's a lot of fun. I feel so, obviously, all the main games are all done in Los Angeles, aren't they? Uh, mm -hmm. For the high-end, yep. uh, high-end PlayStation and Xbox games and things <laughs> yep. like that. So yep. I guess their studios, they've got every humidifier going to, to give the they, voice they actor do. the best chance. They do. And, but, you know, a lot of the voice talent nowadays, some of them still go into studio, some of them don't. It just depends on the studio and the game and how much they, they want somebody there or how much the voice talent needs to be directed. So yeah, it just depends no, on... Right. I yeah. did one recently for New Zealand. I had to get up about three in the morning to do uh, a session for a New Zealand company called Grinding Gears. Huh. I, I, uh, it's a game that's been going for ages it's called Path of Exile. It's a sort of Steam oh, game. Yeah. And I play this guy called Faustus. And uh, yeah, yeah, we had about four or five hour sessions. That was quite hard. But at least I didn't have to fly to New Zealand. That was quite right. good. So. Now, did you have to do a New Zealand accent? Is no, better, there wasn't a beater, British accent. Beater and better, beater? <laughs> I can't. I'm not very good at accents, to be honest. Other people are far better than me. But the interesting thing with voice acting is that, you know, for the proper acting games, if they wanted someone with, say, I don't know, a German accent, they would find a German who could speak English. And there you get an authentic accent. Mm -hmm. You don't need to have an English person who can do a German accent. So right. it's, it's, it's a skill to have, and particularly mm -hmm. in audiobooks, um, where you do have people of different accents, yes. it's good to do a quick nod. Um, or just yesterday I was doing some tourism tapes with my female partner, uh, Katie Brody, and uh, this was for a, a salt mine somewhere in Austria, mm. and uh, it was good fun. And so we had to play the part of characters who were in the mine in the 15th and 16th century. So they had to have a bit of a German accent. But, you know, it, it, it wasn't a brilliant one, but enough to make it sound like we weren't posh British. Ah. Right. Now, yeah. you mentioned, um, as opposed to the clearing your throat and coughing and, and that sort of thing, gargling. Is there a particular method to the gargling, or do you just kind no, of... Uh, it's just a... A glass of water and like that. And it, you know, when you've got a, a, a tickly throat, um, yeah. they, that's when you want to cough. But coughing d does harm to your vocal folds. Mm -hmm. you, you shouldn't really <clears throat> cough um, because, uh, you know, you'll find you'll just get it sore and sore and, and sore. 
Um, uh, but, you know, in an ideal world, it would be like a wine cellar here and in a voice booth, you'd have a spittoon by the side of you. But it's mm -hmm. not very practical. That is it. I mean, disgusting to talk about it. But uh, but no gargling before a session. I do a lot of that. And, uh, you know, it's just, just a minute or two of getting those water. It, it's sort of especially if you've just had a, some toast or something like that and you've mm -hmm. got crumbs mm -hmm. in all the vocal folds. <laughs> right. If you gargle and, and do the notes going up, so you go down and to the low, lower notes and upper notes, and that sort of opens up all the different vocal folds in their various right. zones, and um, and basically it sort of clears them out. It, it sort of hydrates you uh, as well. Although of course true hydration takes a good twenty four hours. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You know, a drink of water you're having today will only have true effect on the vocal folds inside in a day's time mm -hmm. huh. yep body it has to come from within yep it has to come from within darling yes uh, <clears throat> yeah it's 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 interesting but the hydration out here is definitely a challenge it, it is a challenge in this i can it's even worse if you go to phoenix or something and then they have no humidity it's just really hot and dry no. so we're not that no, hot it's funny. Now, I looked up Ram Tooley's house, funnily enough, because he, as I said, he's written all these books. He lives in Arizona. He's written all these books about London in the 1920s. Hmm. He's never been to the UK in his life. Never. So I looked up where he lived, and it looked a bit barren to me. But... Yeah. It, well, yeah, there's some places in Arizona. You're in just desert. There's nothing. Yeah. And uh, we actually filmed a video once in hell. <laughs> I kid you not. It was called Hell. Hell, Arizona. And it wow. was hell. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't have to go on that shoot, but the three of the guys went on that shoot, and it was hell, 120 degrees, and and they went to um, a smelting plant for 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 iron, and you can imagine the heat in there. It was a very interesting place, and and they had to be careful with the cameras because the cameras were overheating, and it was uh it was yeah. interesting, but it's actually called yeah. hell, and whoever coined it must have known because they were wow. right on. I'll so look it up on Google Maps later, but I doubt if the Google camera car went to hell. Prob probably <laughs> not. Can, can I get a street view of hell? No, no, not that one. <laughs> if you, you can come down, but you can't go out. So, <laughs> but you feel sorry for the people driving those Google vans around the place. Yeah. What a terrible <laughs> job. Anyway. And it's pretty amazing. You can go almost anywhere in the world with that, and, and you mm -hmm. get street views. I, I've been amazed yeah. at... Uh, I've I've been to cities I've been in years ago, and I say, let me go take a look, and it's different. I go, wow, it changed. It even updated from two years ago. Yeah, and yeah. And then satellite view, you can zoom down on yes. your own house. And think, <clears throat> I, know. I haven't got a trampoline in my garden. Oh, that was five years ago. <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> right. It's hilarious, isn't it? It's just yeah. amazing. Technology these days, we're very lucky, aren't we? We are. We are. And of course, it's also a curse, but that's the other side of it. We don't talk about the curse side of it. Uh, tech is good. And tech and and it is good, yes. and it is fun to see what you can do with tech and and especially in the voiceover industry, tech today is so revolutionary compared to what it was even twenty thirty years ago, uh, that you don't have to go into studios anymore. You can literally work in your own home or your offices. Create like you said, yep. you have a vocal booth in your home. You don't have to go into a studio or into another city to record. It no. makes life easy, and and most of the sound engineers out there, they can't tell what you've recorded. They go, wow, the, the recordings are so clean nowadays, uh, yeah. with with sound. No, I know you're and, absolutely right. Uh, in my voiceover masterclass courses, I uh, talk about how to set things up for different types of voiceover styles. But <laughs> we're so lucky; you just need fast internet, you know, mm -hmm. a quiet place to put your booth or recording area, decent microphone, and everything's digital. So there's no worry. That, you know, in the old analog days of hiss and you know dubbing over and all that kind of stuff, we're, we're very lucky. And of course. Software like, say, Adobe Audition has now got the denoiser function, which yes. can automatically, at a click of a button, get rid of background noise. Yeah. And it doesn't really affect the voiceover. Hardly any artifacts at all now with the latest yeah. version I know. of it. It's, it's it, rather it remarkable really well. what they've done with that. And it's, it's a one slider. You, yes. You don't I still tend slider. to find that the default settings they put on it are a little too strong, so I usually dial it back quite a bit. 
but it works. Yeah, it works probably better than any other denoising uh, algorithm that I've used before. Well, I'm pretty sure they bought yeah. it from somebody. I think they did, but I'm not 100% sure. I'm they, sure on that they one. They may have, and then they tweaked it. And, and you use yeah, Audition. Yeah. We use Audition as well. It, it's a great editing tool. I still like it. It is. Yeah, I've, I've done a whole course on it because people asked for, for, for it. And uh, the, even the presets are good because I used to muck about mm -hmm. with all sorts of different things now. But uh, I use a, a multiband compressor. Mm -hmm. And on the broadcast preset, it's virtually exactly what I worked out myself years ago. So I'll have that, please. Yep. The multiband compression makes you know, good voice sound amazing. Yep. And, uh, <laughs> and it doesn't sound sort of pumpy compressed. So it's, it's right. just right. I love it. It, it is nice. Now, do you what what kind of preamp do you use when you record? Well, in the voice booth, it's a Focus, uh, Focus Right Scarlet Solo, the latest version yep. of that. Mm -hmm. But here, I have got a Steinberg. What is it? Uh, uh, UR twenty two. Okay, those are nice. Yeah, and I, well, I like the Focus Right. We've been using it for years. It has warm preamps. They're nice. They're clean. Yes. That's absolutely right. And and as well as recording on the computer via that, I also record on a Marantz uh, solid state machine as oh, a yeah, sort yeah. of a backup here. Yep. Is that the handheld Marantz? Yeah. It's yeah. just there just in case the computer yep. overmods. Mm -hmm. Basically what I do, my handy tip for today, if you're doing voice acting and some of it is very, you know, close mic and soft and, you know, emotional and other lines are a bit sort of you know, away from me, demon, or whatever, you know. Yep. Suddenly you've overmodded and it's distorted. <laughs> no. But if you record also on a recorder, you know, that's at a lower recording level, then you've got a version of that shout, huh. um, you know, uh, on your machine that isn't uh, distorted. Yeah, that's a that's very a good, good idea. piece of advice because if you don't have that backup, you never know. Sometimes you just no, exactly. never know. And you do it, you, you simply do it by a Y lead. You just buy one from Amazon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so your microphone goes out of that into your preamp, into your computer. And the yep. other side of the Y goes into your uh, solid state uh, recorder. Yep. So it's quite simple. Belts now, and braces, as we say here, mate. Belts yep. and braces. Now, I've got, I've got a mic recommendation for you, should you ever want to buy another mic. And this is one I, I want to buy in the near future. It's from Austrian Audio. Austrian Audio. What was the model number? OC18? Um, it was... The uh, I'm trying to remember the model number. Too many numbers in my head. Uh, something like OC18 or OC something or other. It okay. is an incredible microphone. It sounds beautiful. You know, the Austrians and the Germans, they take real pride in the workmanship. And a lot of these are handmade and they're, they're made to perfection. Yeah, they, that, that was correct. Yeah. It was the OC. The OC, OC... Uh, uh, Orange County OC18 and right. amazing mic. Uh, I've I think we posted a, a review of it from from Booth Junkie uh, Mike Delgadio. He's another VO talent uh, here stateside, and he was just raving about it. And, and we put a review out there on it just of of, of what he said. And uh, Austrian Audio used to be AKG Pro Audio out of Vienna. Then oh. they got acquired by Harman. Harman, oh. in turn, I think also owns Marantz, and they all yeah. got acquired by Samsung. Samsung yeah, didn't care. <laughs> Can you believe it? Samsung doesn't care about pro audio, so they got rid of the uh. pro audio division for AKG. The 75 years of incredible engineering, gone. So the, mm. the guy in charge of marketing and sales went to England for a couple of years and then went back to Vienna and started the company up again and called it Austrian Audio. And now they have about, I don't know, 40 people, 50 people working there again. And they have two models. And it's a beautiful looking mic. And the sound is absolutely gorgeous. And, and it's, it's got some unique. I will investigate. Thank you. It's got and, some uh, very I love unique. Austria. I'll go there for my holidays as well. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm dying to go to Vienna next May. I'm dying to go to Vienna one day. Uh, have you been to Vienna? Uh, yeah, I, I used to work in Vienna. I was ah. on the radio station there back in the 80s. Um, called Blue Danube Radio, uh, an English-speaking station for Did people like who had English as their you know, second language or whatever, and for all the United Nations people there. Okay. So, yeah, I worked there for about three years. Uh, how did you almost, like Vienna? Uh, in, almost fluent in German. <laughs> so, <laughs> you're surrounded yeah. by it all the time, aren't That's you? That's true. Did you, did you enjoy Vienna? 
Oh, a lovely place, beautiful city, so much history there. It's fantastic. I know it looks and, gorgeous. Uh, it's, it's, and every time I go, I, I I must go back and visit my voiceovers. I'm in the various museums in Vienna. <laughs> mm. You know where you put your headphones on. I, yep. The last one I did was the Crime Museum. So if you're ever in Vienna, go to the Crime Museum. Click to English on your headphones, and that will be me that's taking cool. you around the cool. rooms. That's fun. Oh, that's really cool. Um, yeah, I'm a, little, I'm a little bit Austrian. I've got part Austrian in me, and uh, wow. then German, then German, Hungarian, and, and Italian, yeah. Northern Italian. Um, so it's all mixed in from about about that same area generally. Uh, but yeah, yeah. but it's it's interesting. I'd, I'd love to 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 go there one day. It just looks like a gorgeous place. But take a look yeah. at that mic. You may be impressed. And they've done some things with the capsule. That are quite unique. It's different from what anybody else does. So they've patented some new technology, which which makes it sound just really nice. Um, with is, very good. Is it aimed at voiceovers then? Or yes. Is it, uh, again, yes. Like the uh, Neumanns. You know, yeah. In fact, in fact, what what Booth Junkie said, who's who's a voiceover guy too. He's done tons of voice. He said, "This may be the only voiceover mic you would ever need if that's all you want to buy." He goes, "It is right. that good." It's that good. I'm dying I to give it some, and it's only 750 bucks. That's not Whoa. that bad. That's not that bad for that quality mic. They have another one that has eight patterns or nine. I think it's eight or nine patterns. That one is the OC21, I think. Yeah, that one's the 818. Oh, 818. Yeah. OC818. That one runs for, I think, 11 or $1,200 and has, I think, eight or nine patterns. But again, still geared towards voice. Yeah, actually, that, right. that probably eight. If it's called eight eighteen, and it's eight polar. Mm -hmm. Well, the the, yep. the thing they did with that eight eighteen one was kind of interesting because they, uh, it's a bit more computerized than other microphones. It actually lets you mix the polar patterns, so you can kind of get in between polar patterns mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. I haven't wow. really seen anyone you can else actually, do that. Actually, you're right. I forgot about that. They give you software that you can actually modify the tonality, everything. So you could make that mic. Your mic, literally, so it sounds the way you exactly want it to, and nobody else will have that. Wow, that, that's, that's pretty, incredible, isn't pretty it? Pretty fascinating. Because normally, it's a, it's a mechanical thing inside with yes. the photo yeah. cord. Yep. And so they have a certain wow. bit of electronics, which is quite unique. That's how I was going. These guys are brilliant. They were really good. And they're handmade, and they're, they look just gorgeous. And, and again, it's that, yeah. even Neumanns, I think, are handmade. It's just beautiful, beautiful what they do. Yeah. So yes, yes, it's yes exactly. Kind of, there, we're very lucky to have some decent microphones around. Yes, yeah. You know, back in uh, the Second World War, everything sounds, yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah. horrible meat safe things at the BBC. <laughs> and, oh dear. So we're, yeah. we're very lucky to have digital technology and, uh, and and gorgeous audio equipment now. Yeah. Well, you know this this has been great. Um, and and Peter, we are pretty much out of time, but we so appreciate you coming out and and joining us and sharing, you know, what you do and and how you do it. And we actually didn't. None of us actually went into voice as much today, so uh, we probably should have, but we didn't. We kept it straight. Uh, but do no, it another time. You're, it's up to you, really. But uh, yeah, yeah, but but you're so, new. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm I'm honoured to be on your show, show Rick and Harold. It's a it's a great uh, program. We had a good chat and went went through various bits and pieces. So uh, yeah, I hope you found uh, it, it interesting. Oh, always, always. And and if you're watching and you you're interested in voiceover or you're having to do your own voiceover and don't have a clue how, go get. Peter's training. That's not a request. It's a command to go get his training now before it's too late. Uh, no, seriously, get his training. It's very helpful. It takes it from A to Z. And believe me, not that much. There are there's some good voiceover training out there. I, I think Peter's got the best I've heard. And and I and I well, say that not because he's you. here. I really believe that. Um, yeah. He's got great training. And and take a look at the new training he's done because. You know, you can just do straight reads, but every so often, if you want to have a little bit more fun or somebody calls on you to do multiple parts and you have no budget, you are your own budget at that point. Make, you know, use different voices in your, in your body, in your head, do it uh, and have fun. Take a yeah. look at that training too. And I believe all your training is on Udemy, correct? Yes, it, it is. Uh, and we've even got our own members uh, site now, voiceovermasterclass.com. Oh. And on there... 
if you become a, a, a member, you can subscribe monthly and uh, you basically get all the courses, all the Udemy courses, um, because as you know, when you put things on Udemy, you still own the copyright yourself. So yes. you can either watch them individually on Udemy or you can go to the member site and get access to all of them because there are various ones. You've got like a full voiceover course that takes mm -hmm. you from absolutely beginner to the end. Um, that's it. That's our site. Uh, there's a free course as well you might like, sort of a greatest hits of both um, how to improve your voice and also how to start your voiceover business. And then on the voiceover side, we've got um, uh, uh, all sorts of different bits and pieces. On the technical side, like how to learn Adobe Audition, how to set up your voice booth, um, how to improve the quality of your voice, the 30-day course, helps uh, a lot of people because you get different exercises every day you watch a video every day you do that you come back the next day you see how you do and all that kind of thing and then the the new voice acting course as well and we've also got one on marketing as well how to get the money mm. in and uh, and how to realize your own skills so you know uh, where where you're maybe not you know, not being too efficient at getting new work and where you think oh yeah i could do that so, uh, you know, it's, it, what, whatever, have a, have, a, have a check out and see what you think. But I mean, this is a really good week to get into courses because so many people have got the discounts on yep. with uh, <laughs> Black Friday and all that stuff around. So this is the week. <laughs> definitely, definitely get in. And, and believe me, it's not going to break your wallet. It, it's well worth the, the amount. And, and I mean, well, yeah. It, and I would more. say also, if yeah. you're w w anyone watching who's like an actor, um, and obviously with theatres being closed and things like that, it's mm -hmm. really hard to get work as an actor now. And you yeah. never thought of getting into voiceover. For goodness' sake, th you know, just do it because you you can hit the ground running if you're an actor already. Yep, it's true. And and some of the actors who do voiceover are really quite good, especially the ones who've been on Broadway, because they're used yeah. to to emoting more. From, from being on Broadway, yeah. and you're right, it, the whole theater industry is dead. I mean, I, yes. I imagine it in London, just or actually in England, just like here, it's dead. <laughs> There's nothing going on. And yeah. uh, they keep closing us, so I don't know if, if they'll ever come back. And I know somebody who dances for Tango Argentino in uh, Paris, and he's from Argentina, and he hasn't worked now in about seven months. He said, it's horrible. We are, he said, I'm doing well because they're taking care of us to a certain point. But he said, it, there's no, no performances at all. And, no, I and know. For, well, yeah. my oldest son uh, has worked on cruises for the last mm. seven years as a yep. pianist, as a musician. And now he can't yep. find any work, of course. He used to work for Carnival Cruises yep. out of L.A. And uh, Carnival's you know, down hurting. to Mexico. And it, it's yeah. there's no cruises god knows when they're going to come back it's a real shame yep. and of course the, all the people places that the cruise ships stopped off at you know that was the lifeblood of those oh, communities in it's mexico sad. and in the, in the caribbean and everything yep. sorry the correct caribbean view <laughs> caribbean caribbean yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, you say I do think it's kind of interesting tomato? what harold i do think it's kind of interesting you know you were talking about people having uh, Black Friday sales for the Udemy courses, but I find it kind of interesting that, I don't know how recently it's been, but, you know, that our our uh, American Black Friday has made its way all across the world in, in the form of sales and that sort of thing. Yeah. <laughs> Weird, yeah. isn't it? Well, you know, that shows the influence of America, and it's always been that way ever since Hollywood, really, the early days, because American mm -hmm. films were going around the world, and, yeah. you know, before other little outcrops were making their own little things, but the big films were always American. And so right. the American language and the accent got around. Mm -hmm. And, you know, yearly there are new words which are now acceptable that used to be American and now are, you know, international words. Uh, I, I even heard someone say process on Radio 4, BBC, the other day. Ah, not process. <laughs> so uh, it's quite interesting. <laughs> so, yeah, bef before uh, I and you know, it, 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 it's, it's the interesting way, and other words as well. So we'll probably get sidewalk back again, because you know, sidewalk was originally a sort of Victorian word, and then for some reason, the posh people in Britain called it pavement, pavement. Um, whereas you <laughs> continued calling it sidewalk, sidewalk, which is a better name actually. Yep. So <laughs> it's, it's funny how language changes, isn't it? Well, I suppose we use both. To us, a si sidewalk is made of pavement, which is, I guess, a little bit of an odd thing. But because the pavers make okay. the sidewalk. Yeah, that's yeah. So they do call it pavement, but not officially. It's really sidewalks. Um, 
And it's just like with blocks. Um, there's something with blocks too. Some people call it streets. Some people call it blocks. It's just yeah. It's the same. As long as people understand, that, that's the whole point, really, isn't it? It's, as long as it's yep. you know a way to communicate, that's that's fine. Yep. So anyway, so if you're watching the show, please keep watching and uh, and do take a look. At, we'll have links in the show notes to Peter's Udemy site as well as his website, so that you you can you'll be able to find his things, and they're really they're really good. Like we said. Have a great Thanksgiving, everyone. That is our holiday tomorrow. And don't overeat, but if you do, enjoy what you've overeaten. Have a good time, and we will see you next week on eLearn Chat. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.